It's possible to make YouTube videos without spending any money in 2023 if you're smart about it. Nowadays, I personally spend a couple thousand dollars every single month creating videos for my channel full time. But back in the day when I ran my first YouTube channel, I used to do everything by myself for free. So here's how you can too. First, you're going to need a script for your video. If you don't want to spend any money, there's two ways you can go about this. A, you can write scripts totally on your own or B, you can use AI to help you. To be totally honest, they're each better or worse depending on the type of videos you're creating. For example, because I make my videos sharing my knowledge of YouTube and my past experiences with the platform, I don't use AI very much to help me, as AI doesn't really know what I've been through and what to teach people as a result. While on the other hand, I do. In contrast, if you have a channel that's maybe more generic, or if it's more important for you to crank out videos quickly than it is to spend time crafting your own well-written scripts, you may want to use AI to some extent to help you speed things up. To be honest, I haven't yet found an AI that can write a full 8-minute video script just off of a few prompts, but I'm sure I'll get cooked in the comments by some chat GPT wizard that actually does know a way. Anytime I use AI to help me with my scripts, I'll either prompt it for help outlining the video, coming up with topics to talk about if I need more content, or I'll have it help me revise. Obviously, ChatGPT exists, but I find that vidIQ's AI chatbot, trained on YouTube's data and GPT-4, is one of the better tools for the job. All I have to do is prompt it, and it spits back a helpful response. If you use my link in the description, it's only a dollar, which isn't free, but dude, I'm sure you can literally ask a family member for a dollar and they'll give it to you. AI tools also work great if you're integrating a sponsored segment or one of your own products into your video. CapCut, who I've partnered with for this video, actually has a really cool YouTube-specific ad script generator for free online, and it's super easy to use. As an example, if I'm a creator that makes drawing videos and I want to pitch my freelance services in my videos, I can literally just prompt the generator, give it my unique selling point, and bam, CapCut generates five different versions of the ad read for me to choose from and tweak later. This doesn't even have to be your own products. Like, imagine I'm doing a sponsor for NordVPN. Instead of spending time scripting that all out myself, I can literally just throw it in the generator and tweak it later if I need to. AI is a great supplement to the script writing process, even if you don't have money to invest into your channel, but it also needs to be combined with your own script writing talents to be effective. I have a video on script writing that teaches you exactly how to write scripts yourself, so go check that out later. Also, throughout this video, I'll be making my own video using the advice I'm giving you for a burner channel I have called Gadgets, which is a channel in the tech slash gadgets niche. And even though I said to use AI as a supplement and not your only method for script writing, I went ahead and threw some prompts at vidIQ's AI to churn out a three-minute video script with some minor edits that I made later. Speaking of getting things done, once your script is finished, you'll need to then move on to the voiceover. That is, if your video actually requires a voiceover. Like, gaming channels or YouTubers that post stream highlights aren't really gonna need this. But anyway, my channel was predominantly faceless up until recently, and there's obviously value in not having to record yourself with a camera and or detach your identity from your YouTube channel, but editing a faceless video also takes a lot longer and requires you to put in a lot more effort to make it entertaining. And on the other hand, in-face videos give you a role to use throughout the video to keep it entertaining, but also require you to set up a camera, backdrop, and lights. I hear creators often say that they can't afford to record in-face videos because they don't have a camera or any of that other stuff, but chances are they probably can if they just use what they already have. Prior to about two weeks ago, I had never recorded my face before. You don't even really need to buy a professional camera if you own a newer smartphone, as the cameras and those are already really good. I have a spare Google Pixel 6 that I bought a while ago because its camera is just better than my iPhones. But again, just use what you already have. If you have an iPhone, you're, you're fine. The same goes for microphones. You don't need to go out and buy one if you don't have one because honestly, your phone's mic is pretty good already. If you do own a mic though, and honestly, even if you don't, I have an entire video about recording voiceovers that you'll also want to watch later. After you've recorded your voiceover, you're going to want to first download the free version of CapCut Desktop and throw either your voiceover or camera footage into a new project. Then roughly cut it all up to get rid of the parts where you mess up, which for me was a lot. I recorded about 45 minutes of footage with my camera, which shrunk down to about three and a half minutes when I cut out all of the bad parts. Next, you probably didn't use an incredible microphone to record yourself, especially if you were just using your phone, and chances are your audio is super echoey and bad. So to fix that, literally just check this box in CapCut to get rid of any background noise or echo. Because I was recording from my phone's mic, which sat pretty far away from me as I was recording, my voice was a little too quiet, so I also boosted the volume a bit as well. If you're working with camera footage, you'll probably also need to color grade a bit. 
this is especially important if you're using shitty lights that you already own as they probably aren't perfect compared to like studio lights and stuff. The lamps that I use are nice, but they're really warm and yellow. So this was important for me as well. Some video editing software make color grading really complicated, but CapCut keeps the process very simple and easy by giving you a bunch of free presets to pick from. The one I picked only changes things slightly, but it does a pretty good job balancing everything out well. Now let's talk about pacing. It's pretty common knowledge that a video's pacing is meant to keep people watching as long as possible, which I often see creators wrongly assume means they should go as fast as possible in their videos and edit as much as possible as well. While this works for some styles of video, it also doesn't work for others. The real determiner here is the audience that your video targets. To give an extreme example, a channel about knitting and crocheting will probably target people in their 60s and above, who can't handle the crazy ADHD cuts of a Nate Wealth or Mr. Beast video. In contrast, a Fortnite video generally appeals to a younger audience, who in turn need faster cuts and crazy ADHD editing to keep watching. In the case of the video that I'm making, tech slash gadget videos appeal to a lot of people, but generally an audience of 24 to 35 years old is in the range of who I'd actually like to target with this video. So as a result, I still paste and cut the audio to be pretty quick, but nothing like too crazy. With any video though, the pace should generally look something like this, with higher energy in the first 30 seconds to hook the viewer, and then once they're hooked, you can drop off a little bit and still maintain a pretty fast pace, but less than the intro to just finish out the video. To avoid rough transitions between clips you've cut like this, I like to overlap them a little bit by first extracting the audio from each clip and cap cut, moving them to separate tracks, and then extending them to overlap. As I mentioned previously, the pacing of your video is going to be its highest in the first 30 seconds or so, so for the intro, I wanted to add some animated subtitles. CapCut makes this super easy with their automatic subtitles workflow, allowing you to literally just select some audio, hit generate, and then fix any mistakes afterwards. Then you can make the text look nice and animate in using any of CapCut's preloaded text animations. This whole process took me about five minutes to do, and it just adds so much to the video. Now it's time to make things interesting and add in footage to use with your voiceover, or in this case, just the camera footage that I'm working with. A-roll, which is just the term for footage where you're talking directly to the camera, is a great supplement to a video, but is often super boring if the entire video is just you talking to the camera. Although once again, it does depend on your audience like we've mentioned. So to help this, we need something called B-roll, which is literally just any kind of footage that isn't A-roll. If you don't want to spend any money, Pexels.com is great to find free stock footage. And if you're trying to screen record something, I recommend using OBS or Streamlabs. I personally like to get all of my footage before I do most of the editing so that I'm not constantly interrupted by the need to go download more materials when I'm in the middle of cooking up a crazy edit. For general rule of thumb, try to use a lot less A-roll than you have B-roll in your video. And if you didn't film with a camera and have no A-roll, then you're straight. Just obviously use all B-roll. I started by laying out some of the stock footage in the intro and then added in some animated text on top of it to make things more interesting. CapCut, once again, makes adding in titles and text really easy by having all of these customizable presets available to use right away. Then once the rest of the footage was laid out, I made everything more interesting with what's called the Ken Burns effect. To make this effect, start by dragging your playhead to the start of the clip you want, select it, hit this button to create a keyframe, then move the playhead to the end and change the scale to create another keyframe. And bam, you're done. After adding in some transitions and titles, once again given to me by CapCut, it was time for sound design. Somebody else has probably told you this already, but good sound design is essential to an edit. But that also doesn't mean you need to go crazy with adding a million sound effects. If you're doing sound design right, you basically, as a viewer, shouldn't notice the sounds in the video. To find good sound effects to use, CapCut once again clutches up with a whole library of free sound effects right inside of the editor. I like to put music between negative 15 and negative 25 decibels so that you're clearly able to hear the voiceover, and also like to change the song every so often, like maybe 30 to 90 seconds, depending on the type of editing I'm doing just to keep things fresh and interesting. Finally, for your video's thumbnail, I'd recommend using CapCut Cuts in editor thumbnail creation tool, or there are always alternatives like Krita and GIMP that won't cost you any money either. If you want to learn more about creating thumbnails, I'd recommend watching my video where I interview six professional thumbnail designers, each with millions of views after this one.